again, everyone. My name is Nicole, uh, and I actually work at the Iowa Startup Accelerator um, right now. Uh, normally, I'm the digital services librarian over at Kirkwood Community College. Keep in mind, this isn't a traditional pitch. It's not really a business I'm scaling here. It's just kind of a fun, uh, fun project that I'm doing. Uh, at the Iowa Startup Accelerator, I'm a Scrum Master. Uh, Scrum is an agile project management uh, tool. Uh, and my agile coach says, if you see a problem and you can't solve it yourself, or you don't want to solve it, simply try to make it more visible. So working at the Startup Accelerator, we have four women founders, pretty awesome, but the more I get to know about kind of the startup community, uh, the technology world that I come from, we've just heard some of the issues that uh, are involved with uh, women in technology. So I said, okay, what can I contribute to this other than being a rock star, awesome woman in this space? And I thought, I will simply try to make women and girl entrepreneurs more visible. I don't have a lot of time. Uh, not only do I work these uh, crazy jobs that I've got, but I'm a mom of a three-year-old, a little boy who loves to dress up as well. So I was like, I'm just gonna toss up a, a Tumblr blog and simply start looking at uh, women and girl entrepreneurs. And that's what I do. Uh, so if you're interested in, you know, gotta toss up some cheesy quotes, uh, you know, put up some interesting things that have to do with women and girl entrepreneurs, uh, I particularly adore this quote, um, really fabulous quote, um, Iowa Big School, um, Kinsey Farmer, who did the um, Success to the Power of She conference last year, super amazing project. She really started doing that work, empowering kind of uh, young women, because she was told in classes when she was like in groups, they told, uh, several little boys told her, God, you're so power hungry, you're so bossy. And this is a senior in high school, and she was like, you would never say that to a boy. So. I don't know, particularly like that quote. Uh, the further down you get, you'll see there's another, um, including Sarah Binder there in the back. Um, but if you're just interested to learn how women are involved in uh, technology, entrepreneurship, and startup life, here we go. And now we start getting into a lot of our friends down here. You can submit your own pictures. Uh, Eric is in here. Uh, Eric is a ceaseless advocate and friend, as I know many people, many men in this room are, um, of women in technology, entrepreneur, entrepreneurship and startup life. Andrew's not here. Um, Amanda, there we go. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, I would encourage you uh, to take pictures. You can submit them yourself. It's very, very easy to do. I do moderate them, because um, I just do. But I would love to have the problem of having to moderate so many pictures. Questions, thoughts, Josh? So what's in the name? What does it mean to you? Yeah, Startup Dress Up uh, was a, a quick URL I could grab. Uh, naming is a real pain in the behind. Uh, one of my teams I work with in the Back Cow Factory, we spent months and months in the accelerator trying to name that. So um, I'm a librarian, I'm kind of a nerdy girl. I've never really cared two cents about dressing up. But um, when I was at the Startup Accelerator, I was like, yes, this is not Kirkwood. I'm gonna wear jeans and t-shirts every day. This is amazing. So I started doing that, and then one weekend I was cleaning out my closet, and I was like, I have a lot of business casual, like fancy dress up clothes from previous jobs. What would it be like in the accelerator to dress up for a week? Just like as a funny experiment. Lots of interesting things. So I periodically dress up, uh, and we could really go into a lot of like feminist and how we're perceived and what dressing up and the power of clothes and culture and all that, but we can save that for an academic. I have lots of questions. <laughs> we've, we've spun up a lot of Tumblr sites, and this yes. has, seems to happen a lot, but I really like the, the mission behind it. So what do you hope happens or becomes of, because this is, like right now, it's sort of this fun experiment and project, and it's, and it's it's fun to see what happens, but what do you hope happens? Because Tumblr does have that capability to really take off if you wanted to. That's a fantastic question. Um, I think part of not only am I, your trackpad is not as sensitive as mine, um, ideally, I would love to be in a place where we don't have to have a lot of conversations about why aren't there women in technology? Uh, why is this room largely full of men? Why, do, why are women uh, not as interested in starting their own businesses? Um, all that kind of thing. Uh, so end of the end of the day, like that's the, the end thing that I'm aiming for. I, I don't really know. I mean, I think living kind of in an agile uh, life, I really am just like, let's experiment. I don't know. What happens if I make this problem visible? How 
I'm like making a visible kind of description mm -hmm. page. And it's just really fun to kind of curate the content for it. Um, really interesting to find out a lot of the, the kind of women in power in the startup space are often heads of foundations for large corporations that are encouraging women to do business things and yet they're working for uh, nonprofit or foundation arms of businesses uh, and or lots of businesses that are related to clothing, fashion, parenting, um, really typical female domains. So super interested to see uh, what women I can find in other areas, not kind of typically female businesses. I'm Jeff Mark, I was in a, I'm assuming so, but a deep neck who's leading around in Ascent. Um, of Ascent? Ascent, who's basically started a nonprofit. And she mm -hmm. runs her own business, so she, she was both of those things. So you're, yeah. she's got the real, real experience that she's also started a nonprofit to support. Yeah, so. Lydia's definitely been around uh, the accelerator a lot. Um, I don't know her, I went to her, um, uh, her pitch competition that she had not too long ago, but yeah, probably someone good to get some connection. There was a way that you phrased the first week, the week where you were gonna dress up. And I wonder if you could just talk a little bit more about that. And I, I, I heard you say like, well, we're not really gonna go there, we're gonna save that. But <laughs> if you could just, just like a little bit of what, why dressing up and what did you find? Hmm. Um, so I, I have a dear friend, uh, Good friend of mine in Minnesota, and she started a Tumblr blog um, called Summer of Dresses. And there's another Tumblr blog I follow. It's called Librarian Wardrobe. Librarians are like very <laughs> self-conscious about how we look because we're nerds. I don't know what the deal is. Um, so I'm kind of inspired by those two projects. Um, my friend in Minnesota has turned hers into, um, you know, she makes money off kind of marketing and selling certain dresses and things like that. Um, I'm not sure if I remember the way I phrased it when I did it uh, the week of it. I think there's a lot to be said for how you dress, and this is true for men and women, um, how you're perceived with authority, um, how you're perceived as an authority yourself, how confident you may feel. Um, again, being a nerdy internal person, I feel confident when I feel like I'm talking about something I know, uh, and I, I don't really, haven't always acknowledged how much power comes with clothes and with dressing up and with the way that you look. Um, yeah. I don't know, are there things that I said that you remember that really struck you as being I guess the one, thing, one other thing that I remember is that you specifically wanted to wear a skirt and you wanted other women at the accelerator to sure. wear a dress or a skirt and yeah. to do that to be more visible mm -hmm. as I, I'm a woman in this space. Yes. Is that true? Or it, I mean, it is. Yeah, I did, you know, I, I certainly have suits that I could have worn, but I, I did wear dresses. Um, Tracy Fenton of World Blue uh, came and did a presentation at the Accelerator and talked about some very um, interesting and frank sort of conversations that she had spent, had, had with relatively powerful men um, who encouraged her maybe to dress or act in certain or different ways that were maybe not, I guess, sexual in uh, some regard. And she was like, nah, that sucks, but this is my style, this is how I roll and I'm gonna be me. Uh, and the advice that I read um, coming from a lot of entrepreneurs and women entrepreneurs. Um, you don't have to be a man in a man's world. You don't have to be more mannish in order to be powerful. You can kind of own your own identity, how you dress, your own style, things like that, uh, and still be and play in the space, um, even though there are complications that are gonna come with that. So nice light conversation this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so what can, what can guys do to help this project? Or, you know, you mentioned that Eric was in there and I saw a picture of Will in there. And yeah. So, but, it, and it's a little bit of a, an awkward thing at times too, because, you know, I'm not, I'm probably not going to say something about a woman's appearance if I see she looks really nice, you know, it's yeah. like awkward to say something. But what yeah. can we do to help with this project? Absolutely. Um, I mean, I think uh, helping with this project is one thing, but uh, helping female entrepreneurs, um, I, I am lucky that I feel, I feel surrounded by amazing people. I mean, Erin, you've been, a great mentor for the Accelerator and all the women there. Giving your time, your network, your expertise, I mean, helping Western wives hook her up with everybody else. Um, you know, uh, Trace from How Factory back there is a ceaseless support of women in this space. Um, I kind of think of it a little bit sometimes as, you know, I'm a white person and I come, that comes with many layers of white privilege. So when there are people of color who are not seen or perceived in the same way, how am I a good ally to them? And it's awkward. It's awkward and it's hard. Uh, I think sometimes just knowing and exposing yourself to understanding, like 
what are the differences in privilege that come with being, whether it's a white person or a man, or someone who speaks English fluently. I mean, these are all the kind of like isms in our society. Um, and there's many, many ways to be a great ally. One is if you know a rock and female entrepreneur, send her the link, take a picture, or upload it for her. I mean, it takes a nanosecond to do, but um, I think the, I haven't had many external submissions, which is okay, but Sarah Young of Zing Coaching, um, she's a rock star, if you need a personal coach, by the way, she is stunning, like amazing, powerful, smart woman. Mm. But yeah, submit, share it in your social networks, that would be great. Um, great question. Yes, Ray? Nicole, you know that I've got two daughters, the other day I had an uh, awesome conversation with my nine-year-old and she asked me what she had to do to be able to take over the business. It was like, yeah, it was, it was like a 20 minute conversation with Nicole. But the thing for me is that this these issues really matter to me being able to raise the kids that I want to raise. And it's not like it has to be some big, heavy conversation all the time. You need these little touch points where it just checks your thinking all the time. And that's why I appreciate this. And I just, because it just makes sure that, you know, like, where is your head at right now? That's what I just encourage you. Just like, don't think it's something you have to completely change your life. But just have these little touch points that maybe just make sure you're on the right track. Absolutely. And just, you know, kind of like in business when we do customer discovery. <coughs> or work to kind of understand the people that we're serving. You know, com frank conversations, like the Tech Chicks hosted a, an event where all the women founders just came and talked. And just to understand what it's like to be a woman in some of those positions. Um, I've heard women say, when I go into a meeting, especially with VCs or sort of powerful men in the community, how much time do you spend <coughs> and when do you feel like you're just simply proving your credibility to be there, right? Do you need a red chair to sit in to be like, God damn it, I have a right to be here? Is it the same for men or is it not? And if as a man you can kind of understand that, well, I don't know, I guess then it's kind of up to you what you need to, to help in that situation. There's just one last remark. Oh, two more, okay. Are you looking at that friend group who I'm married to a female entrepreneur and that's her biggest challenge? She, like the, the mom she needs at school can't relate to her. Like she feels like she's on another planet and yep. she's not interested in what they're talking about. They, <laughs> There's a lot of consternation there. She's just yeah. like, what's your, you know. But so is that part of being an entrepreneur is you, you self-select out of mm -hmm. the norm and yeah. then you add the female layer on top of it. So is it is part of what this trying to do create stronger bonds among that yeah. tribe? Why, yes, let's <laughs> do that. Have her come hang out, it'll be great. And hopefully, um, yeah, I mean, I think that the tech checks for me, um, I, I can't go all that often, I mean, I, um, but it's, you just find these little tribes here and there and hopefully over time they'll just kind of grow. I think one of the great things about living in the corridor is in some ways we're small enough yet big enough where we can can have those kinds of groups and still you know, know each other and have frequent touch points. Yeah, great. Okay, last one here. Oh, yeah, uh, I think the answer could probably fill volumes, but do you see themes emerging in what women tell you about their experiences in the startup space? I, and this is complete, just anecdotal, uh, what Nicole hears. I would I would actually love to hear Amanda answer that question because she, she probably hears a lot more. But the themes that I've heard, um, generally speaking in this area, is that, that men are largely pretty supportive, really willing to give lots of time. Uh, there is something about kind of having to prove credibility in the first place. And occasionally something around, um, there's sort of, this seems to kind of come up again and again, that there are, right ways to do things or kind of a man's way to approach thing, things. And sometimes uh, this sensitivity to kind of language, like we say in the startup world, and Eric, don't take this too hard, but like, you're killing it, you're crushing it, you're <laughs> beating the hell out of this. And I don't know that that's necessarily a male thing, but occasionally <laughs> women are not like, yeah, they killed it. <laughs> We need some good alternatives, by the way. We're loving it. We're snuggling it. We're snuggling it. I'm going to cuddle it. 